Good evening and welcome to All About Money. I'm your host, Dhruv Tikaker. And this week, we're going to be talking about the metaverse. It's a term that was first coined in the early 90s by sci-fi author Neil Stephenson in his, in his book, A Snow Crash, which featured a 3D virtual world that's populated by avatars of people like you and me. Now, nearly 30 years after its conception, it's being touted as the next big thing in the online space, with tech giants like Facebook pumping, pumping billions into developing such a world for consumers out there. But what would it look like, and how do you govern a space like this? Well, joining me from San Francisco to talk about this is Annie Zhang. She's the host and creator of Hello Metaverse, a podcast focused on everything explaining uh, metaverse-related uh, issues. Uh, Annie, thanks so much for speaking to us. Yeah, great to be here. Um, I mean, there has been, I'd say, some amount of confusion over what exactly uh, a metaverse entails. I mean, for me personally, I, I when I think of a metaverse, I'm thinking of maybe the book Ready Player One or the movie Ready Player One, where you know you've essentially got a, a, a 3D headset that a, a headset that you're hooking yourself up onto. You've got a, an omnidirectional treadmill, and you've kind of transported yourself into a 3D virtual world. Uh, does that come anywhere close to what? this metaverse is actually supposed to be like, or does it really depend on the vision of each company that's kind of bringing their own product to the table? Yeah, I think that is the classic example. Ready Player One, I think, portrayed a good potential feature of what the metaverse looks like. That specifically being that, you know, we're in a futuristic world where people are very immersed in a 3D world and pretty detached from reality. Um, I think, you know, uh, what we should actually think about in terms of what is the metaverse and why it is that it's such a buzzy topic right now is why is there a desire right now for us to pursue this metaverse and what is this a reaction to and before we really get to the definition of it um, i do want to walk through some of the reasons that i think you know people are talking about the metaverse sure. so I think the metaverse is this pursuit for the next wave of the internet and fundamentally there's uncaptured consumer desire for new ways of operating on the internet and it's not being fulfilled. Um, some of those things are one, you know, the bulk of our time spent is online now um, and this has been accelerated by COVID where people are working online, people are going to school online, people are resorting to pretty much solely online entertainment. The second is that Gen Z is getting older. And so as this generation is hitting their formative years, there's a lot of new needs that they need for the internet and um, for it to be compatible with their lives that it's not being served right now. So for example, social media has actually been quite toxic for Gen Z um, because it's so broadcast oriented and it's so public facing. And I think, for example, they really care more about um, an experience that's a little bit more private and more community driven. Um, a third trend is around economic opportunity, right? So more and more people are actually completely, you know, making their lives on line their entire well-being is online the creator economy is also really legitimizing itself where many people are actually you know making their full earning as a youtuber as you know a game designer as a developer and so this really shifts how people live as well um, and then finally i think people are starting to be jaded by some of these large companies and um, kind of jaded about some very centralized control and i think the big narrative in um in the news is about data, right? Um, I feel like people have been exploited of their data. They weren't fairly compensated for their data and they really want to bring that control back. And so I think those are some of the things that people are reacting to and that's informing some of the changes that are happening in the internet, which I think people equate to as the metaverse. Uh, a few important points you've obviously raised over there, but some might argue that we've we've kind of had a metaverse going in some sense for some time now, especially with with games like Fortnite or you know if I'm I'm a bit of an oldie, but RuneScape uh, or or even something like Pokemon Go, where you know there's some form of augmented reality. So why is it why is it seen as more concrete now versus before this? Yeah, so I would say, you know, gaming now is more closer to that metaverse vision that we've seen in Ready Player One, but it wasn't really always the case. So um, not until recently were there games like Fortnite where there can be 50 concurrent people in a single server. Before that, you actually didn't have many people playing live together in a single server. Um, the other thing is how high 
fidelity these worlds are. Uh, games that you saw, you know, years ago weren't very high fidelity. And now when you actually enter these experiences, you're like kind of blown away by the experience. Um, and then the final thing is uh, really just um, the unpredictability of a game, right? Um, in the past, there was actually very simple mechanisms, but now there's actually a lot more nuance in terms of what you can do in a game, how you can interact with the environment, how you can interact with other people. And so I think it's only been recently that games have started to feel more like they are part of real life and they're not just a gimmicky experience. Um, but at the same time, you know, I don't think games necessarily represent what the metaverse is going to be in its totality. While, you know, there are elements of real time synchronous multiplayer experiences, while things feel more high fidelity and immersive, I still think that, you know, there's very uh, specific game mechanics or goals or predefined rules that make the experience very predictable and limiting. And I really think that within games, there's a lot of opportunities to explore beyond just gaming, but other experiences, right? What what does it mean for us to actually have entertainment experiences on 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 3D platforms? What does it mean for us to actually work, you know, in 3D platforms? And so uh, there's still a lot of opportunity, but gaming is starting to indicate where a lot of experiences and platforms should go and should invest. Uh, you you do talk about you know a couple of things like nuance and, and high fidelity, but you know some gaming platforms and, and games have actually kind of been to the metaverse first uh, and you know they've they, you've obviously talked about the limits that they've that they've they've the guardrails in, in some sense that they've had in terms of you know only having certain uh, objectives of graphics uh, objectives of stories and, and worlds that uh, that you can explore within but what do you think are some of the key takeaways that perhaps industries entering the metaverse can learn from the gaming industry well, one is just the indication of how much demand there is. So I think I read somewhere that 87% of Gen Z kids actually play video games and also 83% of millennials do. It's making up a huge proportion of people's time. And so kind of taking signal from that of like, what is compelling about this experience compared to other experiences that people used to spend a lot more of their time in um, is a really good indicator. Um, I think the other thing is because people are spending so much time online in games, um, I think it's a desire to be together at the same time. And again, this problem of concurrency of like, how can you actually be in an online experience and feel like you're truly interacting with other people in real time is not really a problem that was tackled very well previously. I mean, even if you're watching like uh, a Netflix show or even if you're on Facebook sharing content, it was very asynchronous. And so um, that's that's another thing. And then finally, you know, this is a little bit out there, but I think that people are interested in the economic opportunities within games, right? What does it mean to spend a lot of time in a virtual experience and then also be able to accrue value, whether it's the skills that you're building or the things that you're kind of trading and selling in, in that universe? Um, there's a lot of talk around what are the future economic business models that can happen in games or furthermore, uh, virtual experiences. And I think that's that's a, a very untapped opportunity. Uh, we will get to uh, get back to gaming in a sec, but some people have also suggested that this could be, you know, the very this could be the next uh, step in the evolution of the internet. What do you what do you make of that assessment? Yeah, so um, it's starting to really solidify, but basically right now um, we are considering ourselves to be in the web two era. So kind of going backwards, the web one era was um, kind of pre Amazon, pre eBay, where the internet was very open. It was a very decentralized um, and community governed space, but it was quite messy. And I think the interface was pretty bad. Um, and then I think we moved to web two, which is kind of more siloed, centralized run, like corporations governed internet. Um, and the good part of that was that there was a lot of really incredible experiences that came out of it. And, um, you know, for example, we really were able to accelerate a lot of the things that we do offline online. An example is the app ecosystem, right? We started to hail cabs on Uber and was able to know exactly when it was going to arrive and exactly when we we're going to get somewhere. We started to order groceries online. We are able to communicate a lot more effectively by just, you know, using messages or being able to, you know, do like a video call with somebody. 
Um, and I think what we're doing now is we're moving towards Web3. And I think what people really define in Web3 is this idea of digital ownership um, and this idea that you can actually own a piece of the internet. And I think that's really important because um, what that means is we're acknowledging the fact that people want to spend more time online than they might actually want in real life. And they actually see a lot of value in their time spent and the things that they're able to obtain online versus offline. Um, and so I think that's a huge part of where we're moving towards is what does it mean now that most of your life is actually in the online world um, to really live there? And, uh, you know, we could get really into the blockchain technology that's enabling a lot of things, property rights, um, even the space of digital ownership, NFTs and stuff like that. But yes, we're definitely moving towards a new um, wave of the internet. And I think people are starting to call that Web3 metaverse kind of similar to one another. Uh, Annie, we do have to take a quick break there. But for those of you watching, stay tuned. We'll be right back.